Okay, we are tackling a note on the channel that we have not tackled before, although I've spoken about heliotrope on the channel in various, you know, videos covering fragrances that feature heliotrope, and I feel like heliotrope is found in a lot of fragrances, especially ones that go powdery. So we're going to talk about 20 heliotrope fragrances today. Are you a fan of this note? Find out about the fragrances, and it's a rank list coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yes, we're talking about heliotrope today. It's a flower, a purple flower with small little, little tiny little flowers in it, like a, a group of little flowers together. And I've been a fan of heliotrope because it's almost like sometimes when you don't love gourmands and you want some sweetness, maybe a bit of almondy nuttiness, but you don't want to go into like a full-on gourmand fragrance you go and try some fragrances that feature heliotrope. And heliotrope fragrances tend to be powdery most of the time. And I feel like sometimes I might confuse heliotrope with uh, mimosa flower, but uh, you'll definitely, when you smell them, really recognize their smells. You'll know that one's heliotrope, one's uh, mimosa. Mimosa flower also tends to smell like uh, almonds sometimes but they're really different once you recognize their smells. So I've got 20 uh, heliotrope fragrances today, and I'm ranking them again. As I said, today we're gonna start off at number 20 with a Lab on Fire's What We Do is Secret in Paris. Oh, What We Do in Paris is Secret is what I should say. What We Do in Paris is Secret, that's what it's called, right there. So this is a, sort of a gourmand fragrance created by Dominic Ropion, and it features loads of tonka beans with honey. There's also this fruity lychee in there. And then you get the he heliotrope in here. So heliotrope creates the powdery effect in here. It's a very powdery fragrance, and I feel like honey, heliotrope, vanilla, even the ambery touches create a powdery effect. But the, with the heliotrope, you're getting that light undertone of uh, almondiness. This is a great fragrance. I really do enjoy it. I'm ranking it here because um, the way I'm ranking this is favorite fragrances, also most heliotrope fragrances, and I feel like I don't get the heliotrope effect there too much. So I've ranked it lower, and we're going to Divina Terra with Fortuna. Next, this is a brand, I don't know what's going on with them, it's a winery in the Tuscan region of Italy. Fragrances created by uh, Paolo Terenzi, and it, it features loads of heliotrope here, but it also has loads of geranium, oud, vanilla, rose, musk, iris, amber, bergamot. But I feel like I also get loads of patchouli here. I don't know where that's coming from. I feel like it's in the background. There's some earthy woodiness there. Very, very powdery. Definitely makeup effect comes to mind with this one also. And it's also very, very intense and long-lasting. A little goes a long way. It's extrait de parfum and created by Paolo Terenzi. So Divina Terra Fortuna. Uh, try that for a powdery, lightly almondy, makeup-y fragrance. Moving on to the House of Parfums of Marley, it's Pegasus. And again, these are all fragrances that might not feature heliotrope prominently, but you know, it's there to ex accentuate the powderiness of the fragrances. And of course, we know Pegasus from Marley is very powdery. There's also bitter almonds here as a note. It's pretty prominent. And I feel like the heliotrope also enhances the almondy touch to the almonds that's featured here. But there's also lavender here, vanilla, sandalwood, and of course the heliotrope. So this is kind of powdery, very almondy, a bit gourmand, but also like an amber fougere style fragrance. It's Pegasus from Parfums de Marley uh, for a male fragrance, but I feel like very unisex for sure. Next, go into the house of uh, Zoologist Perfumes. It's Cow, this one right here. And this is a milky lactonic fragrance. Very unique for a milky lactonic fragrance. To me, it smells like a Japanese candy that they have sitting out when you're ready to check out after your sushi dinner or something. They have these very kind of milky candies, uh, some fruits. To me, that's what this reminds me of. But in the end, it's very milky and fruity at the same time, but there's also green notes here, Lily of the Valley. There's musk, sage, heliotrope, of course. There's jasmine, vetiver, and violet. A lot of things going on here. Of course, uh, the fragrances from Zoologist perfumes are very, very complex. Lots of, you know, things happening there. But in the end, uh, there's definitely a powdery edge to this from the heliotrope with a light almondiness. And I feel like it accentuates the milkiness that's in here with the fragrance. A cow from Zoologist perfumes is at number 17. As we get to the front of the list, the top of the list, more heliotrope. But next, we're going to the house of uh, Atelier Orange. This is like this, this one right here. Till this went like this, it used to be called. 
So this is a pumpkin fragrance. It's an immortal fragrance. It's a ginger fragrance. There's tangerine here as well. And then of course we've got that heliotrope. Kind of just is there to add its kind of powdery edge to the fragrance and then of course to enhance it with some almondy edge to it as well. I don't know if I would call this a gourmand because it's pumpkin, it's ginger, it's tangerine, immortel. Immortel does create a bit of a powdery, uh, I'm sorry, a brown sugary effect, a little light caramelly effect there. But for me, it's just the whole combination is perfection, I think. There's the addition of neroli, rose, vetiver, and musk in here as well. But it is definitely a very powdery experience here. It's like this from the house of Eta Libre Orange. Moving on to the house of BDK. This is Rouge Smoking, this one right here. So Rouge Smoking is uh, BDK's cherry fragrance and I feel like it's kind of a gourmand fruity fragrance but it does have the heliotrope and heliotrope as I was saying almondy effect cherries and almonds tend to appear quite frequently cherries and tonka beans also tonka beans is here as well so tonka beans is nutty bitter almondy heliotrope has that light almondiness more powdery so everything is really enhancing accentuating the fragrance to create kind of a light fruity vanillic gourmand fragrance with some spices musks and cashmere and things like that. So Rouge Smoking from the house of BDK. Are you a fan of that one? Uh, do let me know. Um, I'm, I'm, I, like, I like that one and I like the house too. I haven't really found one that I really really love a lot and I feel like the Tonka one is probably my favorite from that house. But moving on to the house of Lorenzo Villorezzi. This is Taint de Neige. I'm so low with my bottle. As you can see I really love this. It's a very cozy powdery baby powder fragrance and in the end there's powdery notes here with heliotrope. There's musk, there's rose, there's tonka beans, jasmine, and sugar. And for me, this one to me is more baby powdery. It really does smell like baby powder and a little bit of makeup at the same time. The heliotrope is there. It accentuates the powderiness. I feel like it's missing the almondy edge to it. But in the end, it's everything working beautifully together to create a powder bomb. Just think of makeup powder and also baby powder. All of those come to mind with this one. When you focus on the rose here, you'll remember, you'll be reminded of uh, makeup powder. But when you focus on just everything, it's, it's kind of like a baby powder effect. So this is Taint de Neige EDP from the house of Lorenzo Villorezzi. And then moving on to the house of J Scent, a Japanese house. This is Sumo Wrestler. Do you guys know this one? Very interesting fragrance here. We've got Musk, Sandalwood, Heliotrope, Patchouli, Anise, Eucalyptus, Violet. So it's got this kind of very powdery effect here, but also very woody. And then there's definitely some tart things happening in the background, some aromatic woody things things as well. Violet and Heliotrope together working to create the powdery effect. I feel like this is inspired by that powder that sumo wrestlers put on. Is that true? Those of you that are Japanese let me know put a comment down but I feel like they've done a really great job and sumo wrestler is probably one of my favorites from uh, Jay Scent. It really does smell great. Very powdery, woody, earthy, aromatic uh, and musky. Jay Scent, sumo wrestler. Check that out if you don't know it. So up next going to the house of Joe Malone. It's Scarlet Poppy, this one right here. Here we go, a musky fragrance, a bit makeup-like, a bit fruity. It's Tonka Beans, Ambrette Seeds, Oris, Heliotrope, Fig, and Barley together. You've got a kind of a fruity, musky, powdery effect. Oris and Heliotrope working wonderfully together. And the Heliotrope does add a bit of a... Um, uh, almondy effect here but it's powdery for sure with loads of bitterness here with some almondy touches and then of course the fruitiness from the figs and then there is that kind of barley effect here uh, I don't know uh, if you really can pick it up. It's there in the background. It's not a very distinct note, but I feel like when you wear it and focus on it, you'll definitely pick out that kind of uh, barley effect that's happening here with the barley notes. So Scarlet Poppy from Jo Malone, a wonderful fragrance. And then moving on to the house of Frederick Mall, it's Dante Bra, this one right here. And this is a fragrance created by Maurice Roussel. This is one of his three fragrances. Did he create three for um, for Frederick Mall? I think he did three. The three, third one that just came out last year, Uncut Gem. This to me is my second favorite of his. Uncut Gem is my third favorite. I like this one a lot because it's an overdose of violets with heliotrope, but there's a, along the way musk here, pine, cashmiran, woods, sandalwood, patchouli, incense, and jasmine. So in the end it's floral, musky, very woody, earthy, and then uh, the violet powder. There is a little bit of the effect of makeup powder in here and a little bit of an almondy edge with the heliotrope, but definitely very powdery and musky here with uh, Dante Bra from the house of 
Frederick Mall. Let me know if you know that one. Moving on to number 10, we're going to the House of Reminiscence. This is Heliotrope right here. Heliotrope from Reminiscence. I don't know how long this collection is going to be around. I've been hyping it here and there. So get yourself a bottle if you can. This is, uh, in the end, a gourmand take on Heliotrope with loads of almonds. And then there's the Heliotrope. It's called Heliotrope. So it's like, uh, the, you know, toss up between which node is coming first. As I said, almonds and Heliotrope work really wonderfully together. Heliotrope accentuates the almondiness in the fragrance. So this creates for a nutty almondy gourmand fragrance very powdery but along the way you have more almondy touch from tonka beans and vanilla benzoin musk patchouli and a few other notes so in the end it's got earthy touches and ambery touches but very powdery and nutty this is heliotrope from reminiscence if you don't know that one, do check it out. We've got two fragrances created by Natalie Feistauer in this video. We've got Cow here, and then from the House of Orange Parfums, this is Silenda de Akume. I think that's how you say it. Uh, this is a fruity powdery fragrance in that it has loads of peach and heliotrope. These two notes are dominating here. So it kind of creates a bit of a beachy solar effect here. Along the way, you'll also have orris root. We've got vanilla, there's musk, lily of the valley, apples, and bergamot. So there's a fruity effect here. There's definitely very powdery effect here as well. And then also, as I said, solar, a little beachy, a little sunshiny kind of a thing. Uh, the fragrance in the, I mean, the notes in the fragrance creates this kind of an effect, but it's very, very powdery and almondy at the same time. A great fragrance from this house, my favorite. I don't know if you guys know this house. This is uh, Orange Parfums. Uh, and it's Silenda Ecume. I think that's how you say the name. Let me know if you know those uh, fragrances from the house. So moving on to the house of Maitre Parfumer Gantier. This is Secret Datura or Secret Datura. It's focusing on Datura flower with heliotrope. So the Datura flower to me is very powdery, but it's kind of like a lily-like smell to me, but a little more spicy. The spiciness from that flower, like a white flower, is really amplified here. But it's mixed with that kind of powdery heliotrope with uh, adds uh, the, the almond the effect but they've also thrown in chocolate here which is kind of an interesting combination so I would call this an amber floral because it does have vanilla and ambery touches and they also have honeysuckle in here as well very interesting floral fragrance but very very powdery but kind of yeah, definitely leaning on the feminine side but focusing on the datura flower with heliotrope so it's a secret datura from Maitre Parfumer Gantier. Then moving on to the house of Jovoy, this is Touche Finale. Here we have Mimosa and Heliotrope together, and this is a very interesting combination. Very spring-like smell, the Mimosa, which is uh, something I should have said at the beginning. So if you know this uh, flower, you'll definitely have that kind of distinct smell, uh, and you can recognize it. It's a uh, flower that blooms in the springtime it's very very yellow and they look like tiny little pom-poms like very soft and cotton like so there's that distinct smell of mimosa here with heliotrope sandalwood violet leaves musk pink pepper and rose so this one also has some ozonic touches very musky and woody and some light spices and flowers come in as well they did a great job with this one I don't ever speak about it because um, it's not one of my favorite styles I do enjoy heliotrope and mimosa but obviously it's not one of my all-time favorite no Notes, uh, but them definitely highlight this one because it is really a great, you know, fragrance that's uh, created with uh, quality and care. So it's Touche Finale from the house of Javoy. Okay, up next at number six, we're going to the house of Initio Parfums. This is Psychedelic Love, this one right here. So this is a very interesting powdery fragrance in that it has loads of heliotrope and also there's a patchouli. So the two notes together work wonderfully together. But in addition to the patchouli and the heliotrope, there's vanilla here, there's myrrh, there's rose, bergamot, and some jasmine hedione that comes in here. Creates a kind of a powdery, rosy, patchouli, you know, almond fragrance really wonderful it's a late discovery for me but I really enjoy this fragrance I can't believe I hadn't smelled it for some reason but I love the combination of patchouli heliotrope and vanilla together it smells fantastic so psychedelic love at number six and then the next fragrance I'm talking about going to the house of uh, LT Pever a classic house which just recently rebranded and this is a cheapie that I had bought several years ago I bought several bottles of these it was like 15 20 euros in France uh, it's heliotrope blanc this one right here this is a spray bottle the version you can buy in the states is splash I don't know why they do that but to me this is ultimate in heliotrope it's lots of heliotrope with almonds there's vanilla there's ylang ylang and jasmine these notes work wonderfully together it's a bit nutty very powdery a bit vanillic ambery 
but definitely powder bomb with a heliotrope and definitely very inexpensive wonderful fragrance heliotrope blanc from lt piper i don't know if you guys know that house next Going to the house of uh, Tom Ford, it's Rose de Amalfi. And Rose de Amalfi utilizes roses, heliotrope and uh, uh, bergamot. Rose and heliotrope together smell super fantastic. And of course, this one does go a little gourmand, a little ambery, amber florally. And the heliotrope has the effect of the almonds in here. So it's powdery, almondy, nutty. And then of course, uh, very rosy and fresh. I think they did a great job with Rose de Amalfi. And it's turned out to be my favorite fragrance in the trio of rose themed fragrances that came out early uh, last year. Up next at number three, it's Celine's Saint Germain de Pre, this one right here. So this is a very interesting uh, heliotrope fragrance in that they mesh heliotrope powdery almondy as I said floral note with pentagram green bitter citrus and earthy woody together they work really wonderfully so basically they're accentuating and enhancing the citruses with heliotropes powdery almondy edges so it's pentagram neroli there's also orris root vanilla and of course an overdose of heliotrope the orris root is kind of like signature with Celine fragrances they're all powdery to begin with but this one's amplified with the powderiness further with the heliotrope and of course it's very citrusy so it's a very unique citrus fragrance in that it goes very powdery and almondy and vanillic with loads of neroli and pentagram. So this is Saint Germain du Pre uh, from Celine at number three. And at number two, it's uh, Lilac Love from uh, the House of Amouage. This to, be is, to me is so fantastic, really wonderful fragrance. In the end, it's about lilac, cacao, and heliotrope. Of course, these three notes dominate here. This would have ended up at number one, but because it's mostly uh, a little stronger with the lilac versus the heliotrope, so I put it at number two. But man, this is a super delicious gourmand fragrance, an amber floral, a gourmand floral fragrance with the lilac cacao. It's like a sprinkling or dash of powder dusting of cacao on top of all the flowers because in addition to the lilac, and heliotrope we've got gardenia there's tonka beans vanilla orris peony jasmine and rose super delicious fragrance lilac love from the house of amouage and then the number one heliotrope fragrance is Lodive, created by jean-claude elena this is the ultimate in heliotrope fragrances and it's not necessarily uh, highlighting gourmand it's just highlighting more bitter roots and veg vegetal touches with heliotrope so even though the heliotrope has a bit of sweetness and almondy edge they've added things in there to kind of take it into a different direction rather than going into the sweet direction they have iris here white musk angelica honey bergamot and jasmine he did such a great job on this one it's super fantastic and I think it deserves to be the number one heliotrope fragrance this is Lodive from the house of Jean-Claude well, from the house of Frederick Mall, created by Jean-Claude Elena, and that is at number one. And that's all I have for you guys today. Let me know your thoughts on these heliotrope fragrances, and let me know if you're a fan of this note. And if you weren't a fan, are you curious to check out some of these fragrances featuring heliotrope? And if there's another heliotrope note fragrance, or a fragrance focused on heliotrope, that I did not speak about today, let me know what it is. Put a comment down so I can find out. And if you have any of these fragrances, also let me know as well. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Please like this video, please share it, follow me on Instagram and Facebook and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. I do have a couple of bonus options. A classic, a very, very classic, uh, probably over 100 years old, Habanita from the House of Molinard. It's overdose of uh, notes in here, but it does feature heliotrope, and it's a very powdery, very ambery, aromatic, woody offering. Very classic, but I feel like it's kind of masculine leaning. It's not necessarily uber feminine. It's I would say it's more unisex, but lo loads of flowers though, with lots of earthy notes, musk, oak moss, and sandalwood and things like that. And definitely has that powdery effect from the heliotrope with its almondy edge. So that's Habanita from uh, Molinard. And the last fragrance I have, I just wanted to highlight this one. It's Montclair's Pour Femme, this one right here. It does feature heliotrope. It's got the kind of cold snowy effect in here with the powdery notes of, along with the vanilla heliotrope, snow note, jasmine sandback, sandalwood, cedar, amber, bergamot. It's not my all time favorite, but I wanted to offer you guys something that's part of uh, you know mass market releases rather than something a little more difficult to get, but it's Montclair's Pour Femme. It's created by Quinton Beach by the way but uh, it's very mass so I don't know if you guys like those kind of fragrances but let me know if you like Montclair Parfum and what you think about it anyway that's the last uh, bonus option for you guys thanks so much for watching today stay tuned for another video soon bye bye